the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We hear in this story about Jesus encountering lepers. Lepers had to stay far away. So with a loud voice they cried out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus, seeing them, told them to go show themselves to the priests. Because according to the law, it was the priest that had the authority to determine if a person had leprosy. And they had the authority to determine whether a person did not have leprosy, if they were healed and could be brought back into the fullness of the community. So when Jesus told them to go, they went and they were cleansed. But one man, he saw that he was healed. So he went back to Christ. And he began praising God with a loud voice and fell at Jesus' feet. And Jesus looks around and says, I healed 10 people. And only one comes back, and the one that comes back is not even a Jew. He's a Samaritan. Is there's nobody here to praise God but this foreigner? But Christ told the man that his faith had made him well. The man received a deep healing on that day. And this is a story that can really inspire us as the church. Because we are Christ's body in the world, motivated by His Spirit. He came into the world to heal. And the physical healings that He did were there to symbolize the, the deep spiritual healing He wants for each of us to deliver us from death. And he came in order to heal the world. The irony is, before he became a human being, he is the one that called Israel together. And when ten people came together, those who were part of Israel, they didn't recognize their own God. But it was a foreigner. The Samaritans had their own religion. They were a separate people. But when Christ came, in his ministry, and especially in the ministry of his church, he gathered the nation. Those of us who don't have Jewish ancestry, we have been gathered together and made part of Israel. And it is our work now to go and take that healing to everybody. And we're often surprised who receives the deepest healing when they experience the grace of God. Sometimes we think religious people are going to be more responsive to the Orthodox faith. When they encounter the truth of the gospel and the church Christ is founded. But sometimes it's the person who doesn't know anything about God, who doesn't live any, in any way near the way we think a religious person should live, that when they encounter the grace of God, they're completely transformed. Right? You can have somebody who looks like they have gone to church every day of their life. And you can take somebody who has tattoos on 75% of their body, who's a heroin addict, has three kids, never been married, and encounters the grace of God, is clothed with the radiance of the Holy Trinity, and in five years could be sitting on the parish council talking about how we need to help addicts. Because that's what the church does. We are the hospital in the world. That's why we exist in the world. Now we hear this gospel, and one of the takeaways is how we need to give thanks to God. And we're here to celebrate the Eucharist. That means Thanksgiving. So I could give a sermon everyone would love about how important it is to go to church. And how there are all these people that aren't in church. But so is that one who goes. And you know who would love that sermon? Us. Because we're in church today. Right? And priests can become famous for preaching to people what they already know is true. Because that sermon's for other people. 
And when and I can become famous on YouTube for preaching what we've said for 2,000 years. And we already know it, and we're like, yeah, give it to them. That's what they need to know out there. But the problem is we can't fulfill our ministry to the world or our ministry to ourselves. We can't even experience the fullness of salvation. Unless when we hear the gospel, we don't see the righteous as having kinship with us, but the sinner. Right? When we read King David and realize all the bad things he did, we're like, that's us. And we hear in this gospel, we hear about this foreigner who's giving praise to God while the people who are part of God's community, they're not recognizing the way things should be. And believe me, there are people out there who do not know God. And they, they talk more about loving their neighbor than you hear Christians talk about loving their neighbor. Who sometimes are more interested in their own rights and what nobody can make them do. But it's the people out there sometimes, and we're like, but wait, that's how we're supposed to talk, because that's our ministry. Right? We, we follow the one who commanded, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. We find people out there who seem to have more thankfulness than we do. We have people out there really with their hands and feet who are doing the work to show love. I mean, we can say we feel love, but we feel thankfulness. But there are those who do the work, and they do it better than us. And why? I mean, we have access to all the power to let us do it. But the problem is our own sin. Right? We, we, have a, we have a work to do in our souls. And that's why the gospel is for us. That's why we are called to repentance. And that's because, you know, we ourselves have to cultivate more humility. We have to cultivate more repentance. We have to cultivate more obedience. We have to cultivate more love. Because the more we push out all of our thoughts and all of our behaviors that are contrary to the gospel, the more the grace of God works in us so we have God's humility. And we have His love, which is a love without distinction. It's in terribly indiscriminate. It goes everywhere. And, it, and, and obedience, proper spiritual obedience, and patience, and all of these things come into our hearts. And then we are out there in a world showing love for our neighbor better than anybody possibly can because we're motivated by the Spirit of Christ Himself. That's where we need to be. And that's, I hope that's why we're here. We give as much thanks as we can to God so that He gives us the medicine to heal us. And this is for us. This is for our children. You know, sometimes I hear about wanting to keep our kids in the church. And that's a terribly low bar. Because what our children should be are forces of nature out in the world. Right? We're not here to keep our kids from being influenced by the world. We should be training our kids in how to change the world. Because who's going to give them light if we don't give them light? So when our kids, when they encounter friends who are depressed and who are confused and who are suicidal and who are addicted and think that the most important thing is money, but they realize when they start getting it, it doesn't go very far because they're going to die anyway. Right? When we have that, that we have our kids can give them the hope of the gospel that lasts forever. And they're doing it not because they learned something in Sunday school, like Christianity is a philosophical system, but because they just are sharing the hope that they already have within them. Christ at work within them. If we do that, we're going to be like the Samaritan. It's like the, the, the good Samaritan, right? It's the foreigner that looks good. It's the religious person that doesn't. But that's because the, the criticism is false religion, external religion. What is true religion according to the gospel? It is taking care of the widow and the orphan. Right? It's, it's, it's having the love of Christ within us. And, and it's so powerful within us that it, we can't contain it. Right? That the truth of God is within us. The truth is not this external thing we beat this drum. 
What is truth? Who is truth? That is Christ. When we find real truth, we always find love. We always find humility. We always find patience. We always find kindness at work within us. And we bring people into a living truth, a, day, a way of life that will take them to places that they cannot go and we cannot go on our own. We are the people called by God. And this story is here to remind us Right, that we should recognize our God for who He is, Christ. And we should recognize what He has done for us in healing us. And that our proper response is to turn to Him and to give thanks to Him, turn away from ourselves toward Him. And then He will fill us everything we need to have the fullness of salvation in here. And everything we need to show that we have salvation by what we do with our hands and our feet and our behavior, not only in our families and in our churches, but out in the world. We desperately need the grace of God for ourselves, but we desperately need the grace of God for everybody out there who doesn't know the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's give thanks to Him now and give everything we have to Him that He may give us everything that He wishes for our lives.